So toast, fellas. Toast. Hard to pay cocktail, cocktail players. players. How you doing? Welcome to episode number seven of Hard to Paint Real Talk. To get, today we're going to be discussing the shootings in Louisiana and Minnesota and of course the unfortunate shooting of the police officers in Dallas. So today with my uh, host, this is white boy Dave, Hard to Paint Cocktail Players. Crispin Alapag. Senator Sean Bellow, cocktail player, baby. And again, our special guest host, Mr. Ready Freddy. The Jamaican great. from another. Man, a few words. <laughs> you know, the shootings were, were terrible, you know. Uh, traffic stops, the the people, the, the victims didn't have any weapons um, and, and were shot as a result of, you know, their interaction with the police officers. Now there's a big, huge uproar which end up, you know, leading to a shooting in Dallas and, and, and the peaceful pro uh, protest that they had. You know, um, you know, it all. I think it all comes back to training and uh, screening and exactly what these police departments want. Yeah. Um, a lot of these guys came straight from the military and here they're train killers. A lot of these guys grew up in the South, bigoted parents, they're bigots themselves, and they get hired on these big brother watching over agencies where a lot of the Klan and a lot of people who are in high ranking officials are by this the same mentality. And this has been going on in Mississippi and Louisiana and right here in Los Angeles for years. I mean, under yeah. Daryl Gates, before the Rodney King, and before really cameras came out. Yeah. Now, the, this has been going on. This is not that surprising. I feel terrible about it. What, I like, what I like is somebody, somebody posted that the violence and the killings have always been there. The only thing new is the cameras. And so this has been going on for the past, you know, 30, 40 some odd years or even longer. But now because of all the camera phones and all the cameras that are, are on top of businesses, now people are being exposed, people are getting caught, you know, and, and you can actually see how people really feel and, and what they're what they're really doing. I mean, that one chick just filmed while her, her dude just got shot with the baby in the back seat. Right. And she was very calm. I was very surprised. Right. I would've right. been freaking out. Yeah, uh, you, you know, know, she went Facebook Live. Yeah. And was filming the whole thing while her boyfriend was shot in, in the passenger seat. Um, you know, it's just terrible. It's just, just terrible, terrible for for the country, terrible for for us as a, as a human race a, as a whole. Just, I mean, you know, we live in such a beautiful world. This world is a beautiful, beautiful place that God's created for us. You know, it's it's phenomenal. You know, uh, but the people inside of it, and I'm not saying everybody. You know, because everybody is not like that. You mean, and like, I'm, like I was gonna say, but all police officers are not like that. I mean, I know a lot of law people in law enforcement, and they're not their character and they're, they're, the type of person they are are nothing in comparison. So therefore, to me, you know, and once again, we had this discussion before, in order for us to make a difference or make a change, is that we gotta change. What's that ready? Rick said that you need to emancipate yourself from mental slavery, and none but yourself can put your mind. That's right. So, the man of the word was when he came in and chimed in without you having hearing it, because we had a little plain uh, interruption, but as we come back, like I said, yeah, you have to mass speak your mind, but the thing with, we were talking to another friend of the day, who was a lower friend of ours, and the first thing that has to change is ourselves. Once we can change ourselves and commit ourselves to being committed to one another, then we can make a commitment to make a difference. But we need to change the system, say it. Well, no, well, you the know, system, me, how can but you change but yourself the only, the system, yourself the system, your car? The system can only change, though, if we change too, meaning collective, it takes, it, it takes a collective, um, a, a group effort to make, to make a difference and change. That means going to these, these, these law enforcement officials, Going to these places and and boycotting and, and you know. I mean, what about the hiring the process? Well, I, I mean, I think there's bad seeds in every race. There's bad seeds in every religion. There's bad seeds that are, are police officers. But then on the flip side of it, I'm not just gonna blame everybody that particular race. Those police officers. When I know that it might only be a, a tiny part, but it ruins it for everybody else. And I do believe that there's you know that we do have a lot of beautiful people out here, that people do, that do care. I do have a, a, a lot of friends out that are police officers and are great people. And, and I just think you can't just take some, some incidents and blame everybody as a whole. But the um, people that, the thing about it is though, is that those that are making the situation worse than what it is, those that are inflicting this, 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 this pain on our yeah, people, yeah. they need to be, they have to be taken care of. Those are the ones that really need to be 
Something has to something has to go. You can't just well, it, you can't it just pat them on the back the and let them go. Process. I mean, I've been saying this. It comes back from the whole system, the screening process. I mean, the FBI knows who is on the KKK list for hate groups. Oh yeah. So when someone gets hired, that hiring agency needs to go ahead and contact the FBI, see if they're on a hate group. Because if they're on a hate group like the KKK, some of these organizations in the South, I heard 80% of the actual force is members of the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. So if a street gang person can't get hired as an LAPD or as a sheriff, why the hell can a KKK? So right away, these people should be not allowed to be blocked. They already don't like blacks, Hispanics, and Jews. They're already bigots. I mean, tactical. Did you guys watch that Louisiana situation? The call came in as a person with the, who, who brandished a gun threatened someone. There were two officers, and one guy tackles them from behind. Yeah. I mean, tactically speaking, that was just ludicrous. That was crazy. I mean, I would have called in the National Guard, had 30, 40 different people, you know, surrounded them, and then took care of it. I mean, tackled them, and then the guns in his pocket, he just pulled off, they shoot him six times. Right. I mean, I felt my stomach hurts. No, it's terrible. It's definitely terrible. Well, those that are in power, though, also, these are the ones that's hiring these people, though. They're hiring the ones they want. They're selecting who they're hiring so they can get away with this kind of that's shit. That's what I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? So, some, there's got to be a higher power that can supersede that from allowing it to happen, because if it can, as long as it keeps happening, as long as, as long as the top dog is not gonna say nothing about what's going on, as long as the the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the judge is a part of him, he's not gonna he's gonna Think let him go. What? Think about, so about all, them, uh, all them work together. Thinking about Donner, Jeffrey Dahmer, he went out and started killing cops. From what I've heard, is a lot of the stories that he told were true stories. I mean, he was once you bring a cop and say this is a racist cop, they start coming against you yeah. and coming after you. So maybe this is opening doors, opening our eyes. Well, you know, I think the situation in Dallas, we definitely saw both sides. We saw the Martin Luther King protest peaceful resolution. And then you also had the ex, ex military guy, Malcolm X mentality that I'm just gonna kill all, all the fucking white people. If cops. he really did that. If he really did. According to the media, that's what they said. Um, because they did say they dropped the bomb or something. Yeah, they bought a robot and they put a robotic and they, bomb and, and, and uh, yeah. killed the killed the But there's no picture, there's no body, there's no nothing. Right. One guy is shooting people, he was on the ground, he's in the building, he's right. on the top, he's everywhere. See, my thing, my thing, and that's my thing, my thing is not just a good struggle. I mean, I'm like this, man. You know, it'd be good for all of us to pick up a pistol or, or a rifle, those that are trained, you know, like the guy that one guy did it, finally get, he caught that was military trained. Uh, uh, to go and start sniping off these guys, but that's still not going to solve the problem. Right. That's still not going to solve the problem. Just killing off people ain't going to do it. That's or killing off police officers is not is not the situation. That had nothing to do with what was yeah, going on in, in yeah. Louisiana I mean, and, and or, even or Minnesota. Go, even when even if you went to go kill them, there's still ten thousand more of them. Right. So my point is, so, some way there has to be something done legally to make the difference, yeah. to make the change, to put them in a situation where. They're the ones that are to become not, now, the, not become the victims instead now, of the let me ask you this. victimizing. Now, I was thinking about this the other day. Now, if you see somebody doing some wrongdoing, and everybody knows people have camera phones, if we were to announce, hey, we're recording you, we're recording you, will that slow them down? Because now, whoever's doing something wrong, they have to think twice. Well, you know what, it's ironic. You said that because both those cops in the Louisiana situation allegedly the body cam flew off their body right. and, and they don't know what's going on with the body cam, which to me is a bunch of bullshit because your body cam is, 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 is part of the equipment that stays on your, your thing. No, because they're, if they're doing it, if somebody's in the car and recording quietly and and watching a, a horrendous situation you know, transpire, if all three of us were in different places saying, hey, we're recording, we're recording, we're recording, we're recording. They take your phone. They try to beat your ass. They'll take. They'll, they'll take your phone. But as evidence. I mean, they may. It's evidence to the crime. But do you think that would slow them down? Because now they're conscious that somebody's actually videotaping them, and they can't shut off their most, cameras. They can't get rid of their most cameras. Most law enforcement go into it, especially in the law enforcement period. Yeah. The time and age we're in right now, everyone knows there's cameras out there. So when you go up and make a, a, a traffic stop or you do something in the public, yeah. you're being filmed. Right. Okay. So they know they're being filmed. That in Louisiana, they didn't think they were being filmed. They thought they could do what they want. I mean, it just was kind of crazy. But you know, Louisiana's Louisiana, Mississippi's Mississippi. Now, the same thing can happen right here in Los Angeles. Yeah. And it has happened in Los Angeles. Yes. You know, a kid got killed on Slauson and Briner's uh, 
on June 10th, and they said he got shot in the back uh, seven times. Um, I don't know the details of the situation, if he had a gun or if he didn't, or if he pulled the gun out, but I think it's threat levels. Most of these cops have never lived in these areas yeah. that they put, they patrol. Should, should they make police officers have to live in the area that they work? And therefore, they would have more, they would, you know, they would have more uh, well, feelings for the community. You know, I, I've just been reading a lot. A lot of people are saying, well, what, what can we do as a society? What, what can we do as a citizen of the United States to try to help prevent those problems from, uh, from happening again? Um, I don't know. You know, it's definitely a tricky situation. I, I do think if there were more cameras and people would be more leery as far as what they're doing and how they're doing it. If, if I know I have a, uh, if, if I know I'm a bad cop and I'm gonna do something bad and I shut off my camera, but I know that there's potentially other cameras around me, I'm still gonna be conscious enough to maybe tread lightly as far as what I'm doing, what I'm saying or what I'm doing. But, well, we but also, but, it, but, but, guess anyway. what, but guess what though, but if they know, and, 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 and first of all, you, the way these things happen, these guys know they're gonna get away with this shit, man. I mean, it's obvious. So if I know I can get away with something, I'm gonna go ahead and commit it. Yeah. It's kind of like when I went into your mom's house and got away with taking that ass. Now check this out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is this is gonna be a quick moment in time, right? Right, right. He ready. likes to take people's mother's asses. So he's one victim out here. We need to be watching out for right now. If you see this honky in any of your facilities, make sure you call nine one one right love. away. Because if he's anywhere around your mama, Let's he's liable to try to take her ass. And, and he's gonna use a falsified God right. help mind, which is called oh, Ready Freddy. He don't even Let's speak. Get but he's taking a lot of asses. Says, Mom. <laughs> one love. Want to smoke something ready? So we'll be coming back with you again with another episode of uh, Hard to Play Real Talk on this same subject. This is something we'll be able to continue to keep talking about, ladies and gentlemen. So and, we can come some time and answer. And if you guys have any other topics that you guys want us to talk about, then you know, be sure to add it, you know, to the comments uh, on our YouTube, on our YouTube channel, or on Facebook when we post it as well. But thanks for listening. We appreciate your time. From uh, Hard in the Paint Cocktail Players. Hard in the Paint. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.